Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. My name is Jackson Mummy, and each week we'll be bringing you updated information about the bar exam and what you need to do in order to make the next bar exam your last bar exam. Ready to get started? Let's jump to it. It is Wednesday, April 3rd. We're in the 120-day window before the July 2024 exam. We are in the window in which the February results will start to come in starting this week. And so we're in this weird transition window that always happens at this time of year. But I'm glad to be back. And as always, I've got Tracy with me. Hi, Trace. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, I'm back from Aruba and see how tan I am. But I tried. <laughs> anyway, back here doing good. June students on the chat box today. And we're glad to have her back with us. We figured today we'd catch everybody up on what's been going on in the bar exam world and uh, talk a little bit about boot camp, which is coming up in just a few weeks, and then answer some student questions that we've gotten over the past couple of weeks. Let me just start, Tracy, as we think about this 120-day window, this is really the time that we want students to start their studying in more intentional ways for July, correct? Yes. I really wanted to address this because this is not a journey that you can just la di da around on the path and then you get to the exam and you pass it. You're going to step it up. What you're doing isn't working. And we have all kinds of things that we can offer to you, but Jackson just said it before we went on today. This is your bar exam. We're just here to help you. This is the time to really kick it into gear. And we're kicking it into gear along with you. But do your work. Start working on it. I'm going to be talking a little bit later in the hour and showing you a video from a basketball coach by the name of Kira Lawson. And her three-minute podcast was about handle hard better. So we'll talk about that in a little while. Yeah, I'm excited to see that video. I think it'll be inspirational and helpful. Let me get to some basic news about the bar exam, and then we'll talk a little bit about things that we've got coming up. I wanted to start by talking just a bit about the February 2024 results. We have just only gotten one state reporting right now, which is West Virginia, with 51 applicants. So we have a very small sample size. doesn't tell us really anything. The pass rate in West Virginia was lower this February than a year ago in February. But with 51 bar takers versus 47, it just really doesn't tell us anything of significance. This first week in April is when we begin to see some smaller UBE jurisdictions reporting. And we watch that through the NCBE website. We'll put a link to that on our sites as well, and we'll see what happens. But the first big moment will be the Florida results coming out on April 15th. And that will be the canary in the coal mine that will tell us really what the rest of the country probably is going to look like. So that's what we're watching for. But we are in that strange period in which you may have taken the February exam, and now you're just sitting around going, what do I do now? And I wanted to spend just a brief minute talking about that. One of the things that I think is important is that if you took some time off, as we suggested, after the February exam, and you're feeling antsy or anxious about your results, and I don't mean just the normal anxiousness, but if you really have a reason to think, you know, that exam didn't go the way I wanted it to go, this is the time to start to pick up your work. If you're a photo reader, it's a good time to start photo reading your outlines. If you're not a photo reader, I would start skimming the outlines. If you're in our course, you have access to your materials, so you can get in and start doing your work. And I would start looking at about 10 hours a week if you're a February 2024 student. Now, we're going to talk about boot camp in a minute, but I do think that's one of the tools that, as Tracy said, you've got to step it up. This is one of the ways you can step it up is by coming to boot camp. If you did not take the exam in February 2024, then... Clearly, this is the time at 120 days when we want you to really begin to get much more aggressive about your studies. And what that means in our course is about 15 to 20 hours a week of study for the month of April. So that's our goal is that 15 to 20 hours. Now, in some of the questions we're going to address in a few minutes, we have people asking some more specifics about that. We'll get to that later. I wanted to give you up front the broad parameters. If you took the exam in February of 2024 and you're just waiting on your results, about 10 hours a week of studying right now is enough to keep you sharper. And if you've not taken the exam in February, 
that I would say 15 to 20 hours. Does that make sense to you, Tracy? At this point, we don't want you burning out. So we don't want you tricking it up to 40 or 60 hours a week. Yeah. But we want you fully immersed in this in this study right now. Yeah, I think so. And the other thing I'll say is that as results start to come out from different jurisdictions, keep your head down. Don't get caught up in the hype and the mania. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago with the state of Washington offering an alternative pathway to licensure. That was really something, wasn't it, Tracy? All of a sudden, every outlet said, you don't have to take the bar exam anymore, which just is true. They do. And looking for the easy way out. It's not going to work. And so you're going to hear a lot about these early states and their results. They don't mean a great deal because the sample size is too small. One of the pieces of hard data that we do have is that the National Conference of Bar Examiners told us what the mean MBE score was from February of 2024. And that number, for those of you that are keeping track, was 131.8. Now, that's not enough to pass in most jurisdictions. So what that tells us is that we're again going to see probably a pass rate, overall pass rate that's under 50%. And for retakers, probably a pass rate between 20 and 25%. That's what that number means to me. But again, the way the media is playing it, and this is why I wanted to talk about it, is that it's up by 1.4% over last February. And so the headline is multi-state scores rise. Well, oh, I'd rather have it go up 1.4 than go down 1.4, but let's get real. 1.4% is not significant in most cases. And when we look at the mean, when the mean is under 133, which would be our 266 overall score on the UBE for states like New York, and obviously we've got states at 270. We've got Florida that would require essentially at 136. We've got California, which requires us in effect a 139. This 131.8 isn't going to cut it. And so when I see that number, that tells me that we're in for a very tough couple of months as results come out. Now, that isn't to make you think if you took the exam, oh my God, I'm going to fail. It, I don't mean that at all. Everybody's case is individual. But the overall number tells us that it's going to be, and I'm going to just use this term, it's going to be a bloodbath. And I think it's going to be a very tough season overall. So we have tools for you. We have ways to help you if you were not successful. And I don't want you to freak out. I just want you to know that the early warning signs are there, that this is going to be a bad set of numbers. Well, that was cheery, wasn't it? <laughs> so glad you jumped on the call today. But now we mentioned tools. And I want to talk about the biggest tool, the thing that really changes the results more than anything else we do, anything else, is boot camp. We've got boot camp coming up live here in Colorado on April 26th and 27th. And June, if you can put up the link in the chat box, that would be great. And we'll put it with this video and audio. Boot camp is the way that people pass the exam. It's two days of intensive training. And this year, for the first time ever, we're bringing all of our coaches in. Tracy will be there. June will be there. Amanda will be there. Brianna will be there. I'll be there. Bobco, we're making him stay home. And it is this opportunity to get training in a small group environment on a number of different areas. One is, I'm going to teach you photo reading. If you're not a photo reader, I'm going to teach it to you during those two days so that you actually can use it. If you're already a photo reader, I'm going to improve your photo reading and make it really practical for you. There's going to be training in mind mapping, how to take your notes and make your mind maps work. There is going to be mindset coaching from June, which is absolutely phenomenal. And if you haven't been through any of that, you're in for a real treat. Then there's going to be a work on something that we've been talking about for a while now called the super ego. And Tracy's going to take a big part of that discussion. Do you want to preview a little bit of that for our group, Tracy? Sure. It's the super ego is part of you, but not part of you. The super ego is, has been referred to as a parasite that lives within your mind, within your consciousness. And it's that voice in your head that tells you that you can't do this, that you're too stupid, that you're too old, that you're too, I don't know, lazy, that you are fat and ugly and not worthy and not worthy of love from anyone and not worthy of being a lawyer and all those voices that are continually badgering you in your head. We're going to talk 
about locating that voice, having a conversation with that voice, naming that voice, and then calming that voice. So it'll be an interesting hour for sure. And it's yeah, a brand new topic that we're introducing because Jackson and I have discovered this work on it in the last year and have found it to be absolutely critical to the whole idea of bar study. And it really dovetails with June's <laughs> mindset coaching, where she talks about the excitement and the enthusiasm and the way that you approach the work, the growth mindset. What is it that keeps us from the growth mindset? Well, it's often the superego telling us we can't do things. Brianna and Amanda are going to work on time management with you. They're going to work on essay writing with you. They're going to work on performance test writing. They're going to work on MBE performance. So it is a jam-packed two days. We're really pumped up about this. It's a very small group. We've kept the number of people deliberately to a small group. And we've created the way that I think makes this affordable for just about anybody. First of all, if you're already a photo reader, you're going to get a $400 credit on your bootcamp tuition. If you're not a photo reader, you're going to get the full photo reading course. So you get the benefit of that as part of your bootcamp tuition. Then we have the ability now to offer a monthly payment plan through Klarna, Firm, or Afterpay. And you can check those out on when you go to order the bootcamp registration and you can pay over extended period of months. And I think that makes it really super affordable. I can't wait to actually get into it in person with some of our students. Yeah, it's really going to be an extraordinary experience. And to have all the coaches there and to have a small group setting means you're going to be getting like one coach to two or three students at a time. That just doesn't happen. And the cool part of this is, June, I think we've been doing, you and I've been doing camps for almost 10 years. Hard to believe. But when we look at the list of people that have been to boot camp who passed the bar exam, it's really extraordinary. And it really does make a difference. Now, we're getting close to the deadline on boot camp. It's coming up soon. And so you need to fill out a short application and pay a hundred dollar fee, which is the deposit. Yeah, right, so it counts. And uh, but we want to do this application because we want to make sure we get the right mix of people into boot camp. We have learned again, over 10 years, that one or two Debbie Downers can really be difficult. No good word, he's terrible, involved. stay home. Really, stay home. But if you really want to learn and grow and get through it, this is your opportunity. We're going to do your meals for you. We've got great opportunities for bonding and meeting and spending time. And I think the ability at this boot camp for students to sit down with you, Brianna, or with Tracy, or with June, or with me, if you're interested, or Amanda, certainly interesting. That's a great opportunity to have that connection and the socialization and the opportunity to talk about it. So you can tell I'm pretty pumped up about it. There's a link in the chat box. If you have not registered, there's still space available, but time is getting close. We're getting to April 26th and 27th. And let me just say, for those of you who are worried about the weather, it is 68 degrees and sunny here in Denver today. Is the weather good in Texas, Brianna? It is probably one of the most beautiful days in Texas right now. So we've got like maybe a, a week or two of really great spring weather. And this is one of those, one of those 14 yeah. days. But we're really excited about boot camp and we hope you'll attend. Tracy, is there anything that I've missed on boot camp that we should be talking about? I went through law school and I didn't have a whole lot of money when I went through law school. And I had to make decisions on where I would get the best bang for the buck. And I took one of the big box bar reviews because that's all that was there. And what I didn't realize or what I didn't really think about was once I got my law degree, all of that worry about that money went away really fast because one or two clients and I had paid myself back for the investment I had put in. So yeah, this is an investment. It could cost you $4,000, $3,500, something like that to come. But you're getting one-on-one -on -one coaching with everybody here. That is a value that we can't even put a dollar on. But if you took Brianna's class on time management, that's 400 If you took Amanda's writing workshop, that's 400 If you took photo reading, that's 400 And so when you look at it that way, it's such a great opportunity to come to boot camp. And 
And once you pass the bar, this is an investment you've made in your future. So please don't let that hinder you from coming. This is a great opportunity this time because we will have a max of 12 people. 12 students, and that means you get a full day's exposure to Brianna and Amanda and June. You'll get two full days exposure to Jackson and me, and we are there for you. We're not doing anything else during that time. So put an investment in yourself and, and put your foot out there and come meet and greet us and go home and pass the bar. Yeah. And Brianna, for you, this is fun because you came along during COVID and we couldn't do boot camp. So you went into private practice right after you passed the bar and suddenly all that investment was worth it, wasn't it? Oh my God. Absolutely. What the whole course offers with all of this personal one-on-one -on -one stuff is things that you are going to take with you in the rest of your career, in the rest of your life. And what Celebration did for me, crossing over that bridge, just so invaluable, worth every single penny. I wish I had the opportunity to come to boot camp. I know that I passed the bar and I got there, but the extra work that I had to put in on my own without that one-on-one -on -one coaching was astronomical compared to what you are going to have to put in if you come to boot camp. So do yourself a huge favor and make the investment because you are going to take every single experience of that boot camp with you into your career and the rest of your life. Yeah. And I, I got to say, again, I'm really excited. Brianna, you've been a guest speaker via Zoom at boot camp, but to actually have you there is just going to be like, and, I know. And, and Amanda's going to be there. And we're going to find out if you and Amanda are the same person. So <laughs> there's. Hey, June. Hey, yeah. June. If you don't mind weighing in, I think a lot of this is around mindset and around that chaos and making that step. Do you mind speaking to that? It is. Excuse me. I am fighting allergies. And but yeah, it completely is. It, from just signing up to taking a plane trip to all of it, it starts with your mindset and really what is it worth to you to finally be done and move on? For me, myself, if I was in your shoes, it, it would, I would be willing to do almost legally anything to propel myself forward because the pain of having to do this again and again is so great. If I'm ready, I would be ready to just move forward in my life. And yes, there's expense, but I don't look at it as expense. I look at it as investment in yourself, investment in your future. I guarantee you, you pass the bar. You won't even think about it. I guarantee you, if you don't pass, points of passing. But that gives you momentum. It moves you forward. Where right now you're sitting stagnant. And think about it. Say you, you need 26 points. And all of a sudden you jump up 20 points. Now all you need is six. That's gaining momentum. You're getting there. You will get there. You have to do the work. And part of this investment in yourself is part of the work. And I just believe it's our mindset. We're taught, oh, no, grab one of the things tightly and don't do anything for ourselves. And that's not true. You have to do for you to be able to move forward. And sometimes... It's just not enough. You have to do a little bit extra. I went back yeah. my own daughter in her education. She had to take a praxis exam, which is similar to the bar for her to get her linguistics. She's a teacher for her to be able to teach that. And she did not pass in her first go round. She was three points short. And her mindset was, I can't do this. And no, you can't do this. And she did do this. But she had to do it again, and the praxis is as expensive as the bar. So I get it, you guys, but you have to do this. Otherwise, you're just sitting in the same spot forever and forever. So basically, what's it going to take to get you to move? Because I can guarantee the sole reason I went from failing the bar to passing the bar is my willingness 
to do whatever it takes. And I mm-hmm. saw that, Brianna. Yeah, yeah. I'm jumping here. You guys, I used to coach Brianna Jackson, and we absolutely saw that change in her eyes the minute she went from, to, oh my God, this is what I have to do. It was a complete switch, and she was all in, and no matter what, she didn't even question it. And it was a different person. And that is exactly what we're talking about is you can't just have heartily do you have to go on it and you have to believe you can do this. That is the catch. And that is finally where Brianna, she finally believed in herself. And the magic was in Brianna believing enough in herself that she was worth to do whatever it took to get her where she needed to be. And Brianna, I know you struggle with that or that. You have small children and, and like taking away from the family. And you and I actually had a conversation about if you had to do this again, how much more would that take away from it? Yeah. You went all in now and you passed. And now look how much your family has of you. Yeah. So it's like a great part as well. Yeah. So, so look, folks, come to boot camp. Really. It's not going to make us rich. We're not trying to sell you anything. This is how you pass the bar. Please stop screwing around. Just do what you got to do because this is what makes a difference. So enough said, I think. We're going to kind of circle around this because we've got some student questions today that I think edge at this. And so our answer to a lot of the questions people are asking about, what do I do to pass, is going to include boot camp. So let's jump into the questions. Thank you, June. I think that's really helpful. And uh, If you want to know the magic that June has, you'll see it at boot camp. But also the experience of being able to talk to Brianna and Amanda who went through this program and saw their results, they killed the bar exam. You got to understand, they didn't just inch over, they killed it. So let me jump to the questions and let's get them and we'll get them out in front of Tracy and Brianna and see what we've got here. First question I've got today, students said I've got physical books for study, but I'm confused about whether or not there's an online schedule where I can use the online lectures and the books simultaneously. Is there an online schedule for the course and how does that link? The answer is there's no online schedule because everyone's on their own journey. In other words, some people will start now, some people will start next week, some people started six months ago. So we don't put up a schedule that says everybody's got to study the same assignment on the same day. If you're following in the course that you literally are going from assignment to assignment and each assignment will indicate how long it takes. Now, whether you use the online digital copies of the books or the PDFs or your hard copy of the books, it doesn't matter. It's the same material, and each assignment will identify what it is you're supposed to do. An extraordinary workshop available to you called Time Management. And Brianna, that's the one that you've been doing now for several years. And maybe you could talk a little bit about what you do with Time Management and why that workshop could be valuable to somebody. Yeah, it is. So so I love this time management course because that's probably, for me at least, because I was a, a busy mom with two kids, like June mentioned, trying to cram it all in, putting in the hours, wanting to exercise, drinking the water, doing all the things. I had to do this on my own and create my own time management schedule and routine and what that looked like for me to make myself successful. And in doing that, I've got, I've got this platform for everyone that's, that's number crunching and figuring out how to work with your schedule, the distractions you might have, the responsibilities you might have. When do you go to work? When do you come home? When do when are we going to eat dinner? And coming up with a routine that is fit to each individual, because like Jackson said, we're on our own journey. We're starting at our own times. So you walk away from my time management with a, a reasonable schedule, I think all of my students can walk away from my class and say, oh, wow, I can do this. Like I can walk away with a schedule that's doable, that's sustainable, that I'm going to be able to show up with, along with something that is adjustable for when life happens. So I go through the spreadsheet and show you how to tweak it. You can set up a new one with me and pay the extra cost again, but I try to make sure you walk away with the tools that you can do on your own to take you to the finish line in the bar exam. So I love it because it's so individualized for every student. It is that extra mile that you can take to set yourself up for success. Yeah. And if you're at boot camp, you're going to get that. But if you're not coming to boot camp, 
you can sign up and June's probably already put the link up, but there is this workshop called the time management workshop with Brianna. It's one-on-one -on -one coaching and it is really wonderful. We got another question about your time management workshop came in this morning. Sue said, if I take the management, time management coaching, will Brianna be able to help me align my work and study schedule with the study guide to ensure that I can track my progress and have enough time to do all the practice? I don't want to repeat my last experience when I ran out of time, felt like I was scrambling and stressed right before the exam. How do you respond to that, Brianna? This is exactly what we are going to do in the time management coaching call. This will be well worth the student's time. Just check that box, like click purchase right when you purchase the program. That way we can get you set up immediately. And yes, this is exactly what I can do for you. And again, like all of our other products and services, you can pay for this over time using the third party buy now, pay later program. So it is really affordable. And I don't know anyone that's gone through your time management workshop that's come back to me and said, oh, I didn't think that was valuable. They just rave about it. So look, come to boot camp and get it, include it, or do it on the outside, but do it. It really does help. And we see the benefits of that. Thank you very much for that. Another question that we got, a kind of a logistics question. Soon said, is there a way to be alerted of updates to the course without having to check in that update center on a regular basis? For example, if I'm using printed materials and you update the electronic version, is there a way to be notified? The simple answer is that most of the changes we make are pretty minor. There's not a whole lot to say about them. The one consistent change that we make is that we add the essays and performance tests after each exam as they're released to us. And so periodically, you may want to check the update center in your online course for that. But if there's a significant change, if something strange happens, and I look at you, Florida, if something weird happens, we're going to notify you by email. We're going to put a notice up in the online course. We're going to talk about it here in the Q&A. There are lots of ways that we will let you know. So you don't really have to check that update center on a daily basis by any means, but I would say once every couple of weeks, just check it out and you'll see the last updates that we've made. But the point I want to make is that most of this material has been vetted over a period of almost 50 years. And so there isn't a lot that we haven't caught over the years. And there isn't a whole, the rule against perpetuities still is impenetrable, at least <laughs> in the age, as it was 35 years ago, but there's not a lot that changes. And so when you hear people talking about, oh, something changed, let me just tell you a little secret about Bar Review, the big box courses, they print the same books twice a year, but what they do is they print one set with red covers and one set with blue covers. It's exactly the same book, has been the same book in most of those courses for at least 30 or 40 years. So don't get sucked into thinking it's all new and contemporary. It is not. In our course, I think we're probably more current because we're more nimble and we tend to be a little more obsessive don't make that into a problem for yourself. Just periodically take a look at it. If something's significant, we're absolutely going to let you know. All right. Next question we got, as you may know, we are offering a new service, this exam. It's called the video critique service. Tracy and Brianna and Amanda have all looked at me like you've lost your mind on this one. But I do know that over a period of time, students say, will you grade my essays? No, we are never going to grade your essays. That's not our pedagogy. But I do know that people sometimes want feedback and they don't want to go in for a full round of coaching with one of the coaches or with me. So we are offering for at least this exam, a service of 15 opportunities for you to submit essays and or performance tests. And then I, it's not going to be any of the other coaches, I because it was my crazy idea. I'm going to do a three to five minute video review of your work and I'm gonna send that video back to you. So it's not one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm not gonna be talking to you directly. It's just, you send me an essay, I'll critique it and send it back to you with a video. In any event, students said, well, I ordered that product, and, but now I'm a little confused because I've just got a, the basic success course. Do I still get it? Yes, you add on and you get this product. Could somebody that's got coaching with one of us add on this? Absolutely, they could. Some of you may have been through the course previously, and done coaching with Tracy or Brianna or Amanda or me and say, you know what? I don't think I need the one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I'd like my work to be critiqued. Well, I'll be the one doing that critique. Now, Tracy said, I think you said at the last webinar that I'm really tough when I do my critiques. Was that your comment? Yeah, you're 
you know, if, you're hard, you're hard. But I think there's value to having me look at it and for me to tell you, look, this is the kind of writing we want or it's not. And I'll look at performance tests as well as essays. So if you have not ordered that product and you're thinking, geez, I'd like some help with that, you can do it. June can probably find that link and put it up there as well. And again, you can pay for it over a several month period. So we're going to see how this works out. It's an experiment and I'm excited about it, but it does not matter what course you have with us. You can add that to your course. All right. Now we had a student who said, I may need to be away for a couple of weeks during the study process in which I will have questionable internet and Wi-Fi access. And I wanted to attend as many of the lectures as possible in my study, but I'm concerned about the possibility that I can't connect to the website. How do I study when I'm away? And that's the question I really want to address with Tracy and Brianna. There will be times when people aren't able to study, whether it's because of internet or family or your practice or something else that's going on. Brianna, let me start with you. What do you do in that situation when you've got a period of time when it's just going to be really tough to study? Yeah. And so I've worked with students on time management coaching with this particular situation where they've had weddings and other vacations and stuff that aren't even planned. And if we know about it, we can actually deal with that during that session and set it up for you in your schedule to where you are getting to attend all of the lectures and you're going to get through the program. And then basically what you could do with that time, doing more essay practice, moving on, doing more performance tests with that time, depending on the number of hours that this particular student is having to put in every day will largely impact what I would recommend that this particular student do during that two week period. If we're just now starting and we're going to be losing yeah. a significant amount of time during that two weeks, I'm going to encourage that we keep going. And instead of maybe attending the lectures, maybe do a little bit more skimming, a more thorough read of the outline instead, in lieu of having to actually listen to those lectures, maybe the, we're either going to not attend the lectures and we're going to maybe read the outline or we're yeah. going to focus on writing and MBE questions. Yeah, I think that's good. And Tracy, what? They mind map during that period of time? Would that be useful? No, you, uh, you cut out a little bit, but I think you asked about using or making mind, map. mind maps. Yeah. You can take your mind maps with you and look at those. You also have stuff that you can listen to. You can listen to it at night. You can listen to your nutshells. You can listen to the lectures. You can do your paraliminals. That just because you don't have access to what you have access to when you're in front of your home computer doesn't mean that you don't have access to materials. So yeah, mind yeah. mapping, just looking at those, seeing the relationships between things in your mind maps. It's a great time actually to clear your head of other things and really focus on that. Yeah. Okay. A, so is yeah. there a way for this particular student to download the, I think, is it an MP3? You can download the audio version is. That's a possibility, right? And you can do that with the MP3. You can't see the videos, but it's the same content. So again, there are ways to work with this and we are working with the student, but I think it's a question that comes up for a lot of people because they do get these gaps in time when they can't always study. And it's not a crisis. You don't have to give up. It's just, I use the Marie Forleo mantra, which is everything is figure outable. And I think this is figure out. So reach out to us as this student did, and we'll try and figure out the best way to go through. And again, Working with Brianna on time management is probably a great investment in that circumstance. One student said, conceptually, I'm all in with photo reading, but the technical part hasn't clicked yet. And so I'm going to push everything aside and learn how to photo read. Look, Brianna's laughing. You, you don't just like click the button and you suddenly become a photo reader. Photo reading happens more organically, I guess I'd say. It, it wasn't that true for you, Brianna? Absolutely. Quite frankly, I didn't quite believe that it was working until maybe a month before the bar exam and yeah. maybe at most two months where it was like, yeah. oh, oh, I'm now using like selective intuition and okay, this process is working. Like <laughs> it's just kind of one of those things that you really have to dig into. So trying to become a perfectionist at photo reading is only going to make you fail the bar exam. You're not going to be perfect at it, and it's going to be a little different, organic for everybody. Yeah, don't get caught up in the technical part. Come to boot camp, 
I'll clean up your photo reading skills in a few hours. It's absolutely doable, but don't get hung up on, I've got to be technically perfect. That isn't how it works. It's counterintuitive, certainly in that sense, but you can definitely learn and you will learn. Just stay with it. Paul Sheely talks about no, notice it, own it, play with it, stay with it. It's the stay with it that really makes a difference. So yeah, be a consistent photo reader. You'll see the results. We know that now. June, what are we up to? Like 15 years of teaching photo reading? And uh, yeah, you know, and, hey, I'm it gonna works. I'm going to in there real quick. Yeah. yeah I want to talk ahead. about our time is money. Right? Our time is valuable. And we're also stressed for time. What if I told you that I had seen this going on how many years now? The Jackson can teach you photo reading in a few hours versus trying to struggle through it yourself and still not believing in it. Yeah. So what does that work to you? To come to boot a couple of hours versus a whole week of trying to deep dive into this by yourself. Think about it. All right. Next question. Student said, I'm resuming my preparation for the bar in July, but I haven't done any work since November because I was overwhelmed at my job. Is it better to start from scratch or pick up where I left off? Let me start with that question. Tracy, what's your answer when somebody talks about, do they, should they go back and start all over again or pick up where they left off? I don't know if there's a general answer to that. What is your gut telling you need to do? Definitely, it might. it's good to reach out, ask a question. It might be a good time to pick up some personal coaching or a workshop, something like that, to help you bridge between the two. But I I think that's something that you have to figure out on a case-by-case -case basis. I think that's probably true. In general, I would say going back and starting all over again is probably not necessary, particularly if you're a photo reader, because it's all there anyway. But there's enough repetition built into the course that I think you can pick it up where you left off and go from there and then go back, circle back to those earlier subjects and do essays or do MBE questions. And you're probably going to be just fine. Brian, does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. And my initial reaction to the question was, well, a lot of that's going to depend on how far into the program the student yeah. was. Um, yeah. If they're all the way through and they were in the review phase, go ahead and start over. If you're, if you're only like one or two subjects in, go ahead and start over. Do a little refresher. Maybe listen to the lecture on a little faster speed. But I think it definitely makes sense with kind of putting both what you guys said what does your gut tell you? Have the subject that you've gone through, are you super uncomfortable? It's, and then maybe just picking up and then circling back. Both of those options make absolute sense to me as well. Yeah. And then the students, if I start tomorrow, I love that. If I start tomorrow, <laughs> start today. But if I start tomorrow, how many hours a week should I put in? Well, I've already said right now, I want to see you at 20 hours a week. That's my goal in April. So that's the number. And then, mm -hmm. The last question before we, we turn this over to Tracy, and this was representative. I got a lot of these questions in the last two weeks. Students said, I want your direction, guidance, and support in moving forward with my best efforts to pass the next bar exam. I'm looking forward to working with Amanda in the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. That's student registered for those. And I'll attend some group coaching. But is there anything else I should be doing? Yes. Come to boot camp. That's it. That's what you should be doing. So I'm really glad that if, you, if you're not in the individual coaching with Amanda or Brianna or Tracy or me, I think it's a great tool to get that kind of individual attention. But again, at boot camp, you're going to get all of that and then some. So I think that's been my answer to just about everything today, hasn't it? Come to boot camp. Dave Ramsey, sell the car. Come to boot camp. It is the thing that will work. Okay. Tracy, any thoughts that you would add to that? Well, not. I don't think so. I think you pretty well handled it. And um, we all have openings in our schedule for personal coaching. This is the time when you need to think about whether you want to do that. It may be. It may be about the right time to start. Maybe a little, a tad early, but it's not too early to get it in place and start developing the relationship with your coach because the better we know you and know what your strengths are and what your 
maybe what your graces are too. The better we can help you as we go forward. What you don't want to do is wait until the last minute and then start panicking and adding all this stuff on. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. And if you're a boot camp, you get the opportunity to test drive all the coaches and see who you feel comfortable with and resonate with and yeah. work with. Yeah. So there's that value. So, which is something we've never had before. So this is going to be a lot of fun. All of the coaches coach all of the jurisdictions. And listen, there, I can tell you, Tracy, Amanda, and Brianna are incredible coaches. And if you get the opportunity to work with them, you will not regret it. So I would really encourage that. All right. I think that gives you the general sense. Most of the questions I got in the last two weeks were like, how do I get started? How many hours do I put in? What should I do? And I think we pretty well covered that, that topic. Tracy, you are going to talk today about handle hard better. And I want to turn it over to you and let you talk a little bit about what's going on there. Thanks. And the reason that I wanted to bring this, I ran across this little clip I'm going to show you, and it just really resonated with me. But Jackson and I have been laughing over the last two weeks at some of these newspaper articles and website articles we've been reading about, you know, how much easier it can be to pass the bar if you just go to Washington, for example, or with the next gen exam coming. And look, there is nothing about this that is easy. And there's nothing about this that, that you can make easy. But what you can do is handle hard better. Let's listen to this basketball coach. It doesn't sound like it's relevant, but it is. Let's listen to what she says. And then I'll, uh, I'll spring off of that and also give that opportunity to everyone else on the panel for what they think it brings up in their minds. It's about a three-minute clip, and I've watched it, I don't know how many times this week, it's really resonated with me, so I hope it will for you, too. And you're seeing it? Yes. I was talking with Shay a couple days ago, and one of the things we talked about was how we all wait in life for things to get easier. I think in your own life, if you waited for something to get easier, I've just got to get through preseason, and it'll be okay. I've just got to get through by junior year of high school, and then the classes are going to get easier. Well, I've just got to get to my spring and my senior year of college, and it's going to be easier. It's what we do. We wait for stuff to get easier. It will never get easier. What happens is you handle hard better. That's what happens. Most people think that it's going to get easier. Life is going to get easier. Basketball is going to get easier. School's going to get easier. It never gets easier. What happens is you become someone that handles hard stuff better. So that's a mental shift that has to occur in each of your brains. It has to, because if you go around waiting for stuff to get easier in life, it's never going to happen. And then what happens? Oh, it's so hard. Oh, I can't do it. All of this. I don't know when it, when is it going to be easy for me? Oh, it's easy for other people. It's not. It's hard. And the second see you handling stuff, handling hard better, what are we going to do? We're going to make it hard. We're going to make it harder because we're preparing for you for when you leave here not just basketball and life. And if you think life when you leave college is going to be all of a sudden get easy because you graduated and you got a degree, it's not going to get easier. It's going to get harder. So make yourself a person that handles hard well, not someone that's waiting for the easy. Because if you have a meaningful pursuit in life, it will never be easy. If you're trying to win a championship, if you're trying to have a family, ask your parents. Do you think it was ever easy for them to raise kids? Karen, is it easy? It's not. Any meaningful pursuit in life, if you want to be successful at it, it goes, it goes to the people that handle hard well. Those are the people that get the stuff they want. People that wait around for easy, you probably see them at the bus stop. They're waiting for easy, the easy bus to come around. The easy bus never comes around. Got to handle hard. Okay? So don't get discouraged through this time. If it's hard, don't get discouraged. It's supposed to be. And don't wait for it to be, e oh, I just got to get through the summer. And then it'll all of a sudden get easy in the fall. No, well, it won't. It won't get easy in the fall. So make yourself someone that handles hard well. And then whatever comes at you, you're going to be great. You're going to be great. Okay. Yeah. It's never going to get easier. It says hard. And it is hard when you pass the bar and you get into law practice, isn't it, Brianna? It never gets easier. I, every time I went into court, it was harder than the last time. It, Every time I sat on the bench and 
dealt with the same kind of case. It was harder than the last day that I dealt with that same kind of case. What makes it doable is, is your mindset and how you will prepare. The bar exam is shared. It's maybe the hardest two days that I can think of in my life. It is hard, but I was prepared. I was ready to go. And you can be prepared too. Brianna was obviously prepared. Amanda was prepared. Jackson was prepared. June could sit down and take the bar exam. Probably she could be prepared. So we can help you prepare, but you have to be the one that gets away from the bus stop. I love that when she talks about you. you see people waiting for the easy bus to come around. There's no easy bus here. There's no easy bus. Handle hard better. I love it. That is spot on. And I think it's a great way to start this push for a four month into the exam that you're going to, you're going to be challenged. There are going to be moments over the next four months that are very challenging and potentially discouraging. And we're here to support you and walk you through that journey. And you'll come out on the other side and you can prevail. And for those of you waiting for your results from February, we're with you. We recognize the the strain and difficulty as you wait. And when you get your results, we're excited. I expect them to be favorable for most of you, but if they're not favorable, it's not the end. It's just harder and we can help you do that. I failed to mention earlier one final piece about boot camp, and I want to make sure that I covered this. And that is that if you were a February 2024 bar taker, we are offering you a guarantee on boot camp. If you register and come to boot camp and then get your results after boot camp and they are favorable, we're going to refund your boot camp tuition so that you're actually taking very little risk. But if you were not successful, then you've had the benefit of boot camp and you can push your way into the July exam, I think much more effectively. So make sure you check that out. It's, I know some of you have asked me, hey, I really like to come to boot camp or I'm thinking about it, but I'm not going to get my results in California or Georgia or New York or Texas until after boot camp. This is your way to be able to do that and not have a risk. So lots of ways that we can help you handle hard better, but ultimately it's up to you. Got to make that choice. Brianna, you made that choice. You handled hard better. It was worth it, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. This, it, th this is something that I used to say a long time ago, and I need to bring it back up again. They were just reminding me to, to life can either happen to you or it can happen for you. And when you handle the hard better, you're letting it happen for you. You're taking control. You're the one who is in charge. And once you recognize your power to be able to do that and to take the reins, you are going to have that mental shift that you need to pass the bar. And that's what Jackson and June are talking about. What they saw in me was that shift, that shift of taking charge. And we can and, and, help you get there. Yeah. And it's palpable. We can tell. We can see when somebody's made that shift they've got that steel in their eyes. So that's what I want to see. I want you to come to boot camp. I want to be able to look you in the eyes and see you begin to succeed. To succeed. Hey, it's been great to, to get back into the flow with everybody. We will be back next Wednesday, starting now pretty consistently all the way into the July exam. We'll be reporting on some results next week, still ahead of the Florida results, but we'll have a few states in by then. So Good luck to all of you who are waiting on results right now. Those of you that are starting your studies, let's go. Let's wait till tomorrow. Let's go. And let's handle hard better. Thanks, June, Tracy, Brianna. And we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye, everybody.